Hey, what's up, Street Talks? The Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography God. So today I'm going to give you guys a basic uh, introduction to the new Adobe Lightroom CC. So for those of you guys who are unfamiliar, there's two versions of Lightroom now. So there's the classic Adobe Lightroom. Now the 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 Lightroom we all know and love, and that we've been using on the desktop forever, and the way I see it is the future of photography is going to be mobile. And so essentially they rebranded Lightroom as classic CC and I think it's eventually gonna get killed off sooner or later. So why not evolve with time? So there's this new exciting thing called Adobe Lightroom CC, which is essentially optimized for mobile. And I've been testing the last few days and I actually prefer Photoshop Lightroom CC over the standard desktop edition. Uh, for several reasons. First of all, I think it's just faster. And also, I've been using it a lot recently on my iPad. And the great thing with Adobe Lightroom CC is that it just kind of keeps all your files synced. And in today's digital world, and if you're working as a modern photographer, you're going to always be kind of on the road and you're not always going to have access to your laptop. And now that the iPad is actually, and the iPhone is getting so powerful, like I have the new iPad Pro, the 10.5 inch, and it's pretty damn powerful. And I don't even really use my laptop much anymore. It's pretty much my primary device. But I'm currently having issues trying to do screen captures off the iPad, so I'll do it off the desktop anyways. So when you first open up Lightroom CC, the first thing you'll notice is that it's uber minimalist, which I personally like because I think the standard desktop version of the older versions of Lightroom, like you know, five and six, they're just a little bit too complicated for beginners. And the first thing you would just want to do is take your digital camera. So here I have the Ricoh GR, you know, pop out the SD card, boom. I recommend Transcend, cheap on Amazon and it's worked really well. So here I am plugging into the side of my laptop and all you have to do is Press the little plus button in the top left corner and you know just accessing the Ricoh GR. Click review for import. And you don't really have to touch anything, which I love. It's just it's just super simple. And so these are about like 100 pictures that I shot. So click add 97 photos in the top right corner. And you can see this dialogue here that it's uh, importing. And one of the, the things when you're looking around it is, and I found it personally, it's easy to get lost. To navigate around, there's like little columns here. So you got the square grid, you got the detail grid. Also, you could navigate by uh, filtering it according to capture date, import date, modify date, and blah, blah, blah. I just keep capture date. And if you want to make the thumbnails bigger or smaller, you could just zoom in the bottom right corner here. Or, you know, you could just kind of access it to look around quickly. You can still use a lot of the hotkeys. So if you want to capture the enhanced view, just press E. If you want to go back to the gallery view on the keyboard, you can just press G. And generally I prefer using uh, keyboard hotkeys, assuming you're using the desktop. If not, the, the interface is pretty much the same on the iPad, which I, I, I really love. And also the cool thing with Adobe Creative Cloud, you can get the free, or not free, but you get cloud storage up to a terabyte, and I actually think that it's a, it's a really good offer. I think it's about like 10 bucks a month, and you know, obviously a lot of us don't like to pay monthly fees uh, for things, but to me, I think this is actually very fantastic because you know I already pay like 10 bucks a month for Spotify, I spend 10 bucks a month for a Dropbox Pro, and anything that can make our lives a little bit less stressful and it's like the price of like two Starbucks lattes, like why not, right? And also I could connect, I could import my pictures to my laptop or to my iPad and it's all synced in the cloud. So the cloud's where it's, where it's at. So in, in terms of looking through the pictures, generally what I do is you could just press E to enhance the picture, press G to go back to the gallery view, or just double click it and essentially kind of look through your pictures. And based on my personal experience, just looking through Lightroom uh, CC, the, the newer version, it's a lot faster to load the images than the old school version. I think it's because they probably rebuilt the architecture. And on the desktop, I actually find it lags a little bit, but when I'm using my iPad, it just essentially loads instantaneously. And 
I still think that Adobe is the best when it comes to photo management software. Uh, I, I think the new um, Apple Photos app is actually fantastic as well. But once again, Adobe is the shit and they make the best products. So anyways, one of the another practical tip I have when you're choosing your best pictures is I don't actually recommend for you to look at your pictures full screen one by one. Rather, it's easier to look at your photos as this grid view because you could kind of better judge the composition and tell what your best pictures are just from this um, uh, smaller thumbnails here. Because this is even a tip that Henri Cartier-Bresson once did was he'd look at all his contact sheets as small thumbnails and he would choose his compositions based on it. And therefore, what I'll, I'd probably do is I'm, I'm looking through my pictures. I kind of like this diagonal tilt you could see the selfie of me with a Rico in my face here. So I'll just click that. And then you could either press the flag, you could pick as uh, flagged. And the new hotkey, this is actually really important to pick a picture is Z. Or if you're gonna reject, it's X. And on the keyboard, at least on the, on the laptop, the Z and X buttons are left and right. So this actually kind of makes more sense. In the past, P was pick, now Z is pick. So, Let's say I picked that picture, Z is good. And the nice thing too is that rather than looking at, so you know, it's a picture of a building I shot here, rather than looking at each picture individual, I just kind of think to myself, which composition feels the most dynamic. So I kind of like this one looks like the building's looking at me, so I'll press Z here. Took some pictures of bread. And the thing that's so interesting, you know, I, I'm personally, I don't eat bread, but <laughs> I just love how it kind of looks like abstract images, like, kind of looks like a, a river or a tree. So I'll press Z here, kind of like this um, picture is here, it's kind of zooming around, kind of scrolling around. And even you see these pictures of these buildings I shot here. Yeah, I kind of like the, the colors here of the orange against the blue. Some pictures I shot of a guy here in Berlin. You could kind of see how I worked the scene, took a lot of different pictures of him. You can see the pictures I shot at a distance aren't as interesting. I think the close-up pictures are much more fascinating. In terms of a unique perspective, I actually kind of like uh, this perspective here of him super low looking up and also just him just chatting and he just kind of laughing. It just kind of puts me in a, a good mood. And once again, I could judge the compositions just based on looking at small thumbnails. And also you can see a series of pictures that I shot inside the living room in terms of which one is the best composition. I kind of like the pictures with this nice composition of this lamp above her, her hand on her chin here. If I'm looking through the pictures here, yeah, this one's actually probably the best one. So press G. So if you're not, so if you want to start to filter your pictures, so this is actually a little bit hidden. You could press this little filters button up here and you could show it according to your stars or your picks. Generally nowadays, my recommendation is just press P for pick or sorry, uh, Z for pick, and only show your flag pictures. I, I think it's kind of a waste of time to just um, X your pictures or reject your pictures. To me, it's either pick or don't touch them at all. And if you want to look through your pictures, you can just kind of look through them one by one. Now, you can see how it's all filtered according to images. And if you want to process your pictures or add filters, you could press this little edit module here. And you know, you have all these settings here. Generally, what I recommend to do now is use the presets. I think these presets are actually really, really good. Um, generally, the ones that I think that I personally really like is surprisingly, this matte one actually has this, you know, a lot of people don't like this like kind of hipster, you know, moody feel, but I actually quite like it. I think it looks quite cool. I think also the, the high contrast or the punchy detail shots are good. So I don't know, uh, Adobe, what, what you guys did with uh, the presets, but they look fantastic. So let's say, and you know, honestly, just choosing a preset, just choose what looks good to you. This natural one's pretty good. I kind of like the moody look of the mat, so I'll just choose that. Looking at this, this guy here, once again, kind of looking through the shots, looking through the presets. Yeah, I think on the Rico, I kind of like this punchy detail picture. Punchy detail, high contrast. Actually here, high contrast looks kind of good. And yeah, anything that could simplify your life is a good thing. 
So I think the mat looks pretty cool, but some pictures you're going to obviously see it's a little bit too exaggerated in the corners. So yeah, I really like this punchy detail or even this natural punchy detail, natural. Yeah, here natural looks fine. And I'm still, and please bear with me, I'm still pretty new to um, Adobe Lightroom CC, but essentially what I could say is I really like it so far. Yeah. Punchy detail. Yeah. Let's do punchy detail. I kind of like punchy detail. I think punchy detail is good. We'll apply punchy detail to everything. All right, everything's going to be nice and punchy. Anyways, and uh, if you want to export these images, Command A to select all the images. And then now in the top right corner, there's the save button, just save to. And I kind of like it that it's become more minimalist because it's obviously op optimized for the iPad or whatever. And I'll create a new folder. I'll title this Berlin version three. And I have these all synced in Dropbox. Click choose, full size, click save. And bada bing, bada boom, we're saving the, the images to uh, Dropbox. So I've got Dropbox pictures, 2017, my Berlin version three images. And once again, I, you know, Adobe Lightroom CC, the new Creative Cloud version, it's, it's still in beta. There's a lot of new things. I mean, there's tons of modules on the side I haven't even started discussing yet. But my personal philosophy with photography workflow and editing, it's just kind of keep it, keep it simple and keep it straightforward. And now you can see all my images being exported. And you can see this little sync icon, which means it's being kept in sync. So if you guys are curious, so I have like 3,000 other images and my internet connection is not uber fast, so it's just, it's still syncing in the background. But what I essentially do is, you know, export the images, let Adobe do its cloud storage sync thing, but always export the JPEGs and keep them as files on your computer because it just allows for more flexibility so you can see the images one by one. And I think ultimately having access to the original JPEG files is always going to be advantageous in your photography. And from, from that point forward, you know, you could uh, upload the pictures. So generally what I do in, um, in WordPress, I will upload my images directly to my wordpress.org blog, the finder. I'll just drag these images into my media library. And if I ever want to do a, a blog post and access some of these images here, so let's say I want to do more like, you know, my experiences shooting street photography in Berlin, whatever it may be, uh, images are still uploading. But anyways, then I could just click add media and then look at my media catalog of images to kind of share my experiences of how it's like to shoot here in Berlin. So you could see some of my earlier shots from Berlin and let's say I took this nice picture of Cindy and I actually did uh, process this with the Adobe Lightroom CC. Click the visual editor. And yeah, you could see it kind of, this was also with the matte um, preset here in Adobe Lightroom CC. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, just stick to the presets. It just makes life a little bit easier. And I could be like, Adobe Lightroom CC is awesome, or whatever it may be. And then click publish, but obviously that's kind of a dumb blog post. I won't do that. But anyways, yeah, so this is just my basic overview of Adobe Lightroom CC. I think for the price of two cappuccinos a month, it's, it's definitely worth it. I'm still exploring new options. Hopefully I could do a video with uh, showing you guys how to use on the iPad soon. But yeah, thanks so much for watching guys. If you want to access more free presets uh, for the classic Adobe Lightroom, this Google Air Kim presets. And if you go to my blog, just click the, the first thing. There should be a link to download the, the presets since there's no stupid uh, things getting in your way. You can access the presets. You could export it and you can see all these nice presets you could apply to 
the classic, oops, not that, Adobe Lightroom Classic. So I've already developed a lot of old school presets that are optimized for the Ricoh GR, and they should be able to be accessed in the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic CC. But once again, let's be new. You can even look at the icons right here. It's like the old school boxy icon and the new school Lightroom CC icon is nice and round and more modern. So it's so funny now that I'm opening up Lightroom Classic CC, it's, you know, obviously it's, I've, I've used it forever, so I know how to use it inside and out. But comparing the two products, that and Lightroom CC, it's just, everything is just so much more clean and fresh and a breath of fresh air. So once again, let's uh, adapt as modern photographers and or else we're going to die. All right. Thanks so, so much for watching, guys. Peace out.